Recasts in TV shows are nothing new. You'll find no shortage of examples. It happens all the time for a variety of different reasons. Pay disputes, other acting opportunities, conflicts between co-stars, or other outside personal reasons. The list goes on. There are plenty of reasons for actors to leave shows, or be asked to leave. But sometimes just because you lose an actor doesn't mean you have to lose a character. Everyone knows about the two Beckys on Roseanne, or the two Darrens on Bewitched, played by a couple of dicks. But there's plenty of recasts that often get lost to the annals of time, or just go unspoken of. Today's topic is one such occasion. The show Shameless had a cast of characters enter and exit the series throughout its time, sometimes at rapid speed. The show that ended hardly resembled the show that began, in terms of its cast of characters at least. One such character lost was Mandy Milkovich, a part that was played by two different actresses. And while both were similar in style, they were very different in substance and execution. I'd like to go more into Mandy as a person at a later date, so today I mainly want to focus on Mandy as a performance and the two performers that played her. In season one, the part was played by actress Jane Levy. Mandy? Hey, Ian. Uh, what's, what's going on? Well, I think you might be my knight in shining armor. I could pretend to be your girlfriend at school and stuff, then no one would ever give you a hard time. You'd keep the creepy guys away from me. What was that for? I just felt like kissing my boyfriend. Have fun and cash. Nice jacket Cash bought you, by the way. Thanks. Yeah. Tell Cash I'll take it in the ass if he gets me free stuff. <laughs> Cash had better move his family back to Baghdad before Mickey gets out. He's from Evanston. Won't be nearly far enough. Who portrayed the character as an unpredictable problem child. She was the radical rebel without a cause. She was so obnoxious and outrageous, you never truly knew what she'd do next. Simply put, you couldn't plan for this Mandy. While she showcased a big personality, at times it seemed to go into borderline psychotic territories, jumping to extremes whenever she felt slighted. Her reckless nature caused problems for the Gallagher boys early on, but she quickly turned things around and got on good terms with them, acting as Ian's fake girlfriend to help him hide his sexuality. And while this actress was great in the part and really gave a voice to this character that would not stop shouting, she didn't return to the role the following season, choosing instead to be the lead on the show, Suburgatory, whatever that is. She was replaced the following season by actress Emma Greenwell. You know what? Nothing's ever your problem. For once, you know, make something your problem. I said I'm some girl and girl last week. It's the only thing he ever wants. So I'll just send him a selfie. A selfie? You know, picture. What are you doing? What happened? I've got blood on this dress. I've worn this like twice. Miss it hearing, and my dad will come after you with a linoleum knife and a bucket of battery acid. He drinks and mistakes me for mom. Only once in a while. Not like it's a big deal. You look really pretty, Mandy. <laughs> She was still troubled, but she seemed less like chaos incarnate. Emma's Mandy felt much more sympathetic than her predecessor. She had many more moments of sincerity, but it also sort of felt like Emma turned the volume down a bit on this otherwise very loud character. She was much more calm in demeanor and delivery. Maybe this was in an effort to make her a little bit less distracting, as she'd take up more of a supporting role in following seasons. Becoming integral to the show, the character always had a softer side, but it's much more prevalent in this second iteration of the character. Mandy feels much more open and vulnerable with Emma in the part. She brought a much more compassionate edge to the character that allowed her potential relationship with Lip to prosper. Emma's Mandy could be heartless to some, but she had plenty of moments that were heartfelt. She made countless sacrifices. She shows very little regard for herself and constantly goes above and beyond for Lip in ways that I just, quite frankly, couldn't see the first actress doing. Emma truly captured the tragedy of this character, taking part in some of the most heartbreaking stories those seasons provided fans. However, that's not to say that Emma's Mandy didn't meet Jane's Mandy's madness. With Mandy 1, the mayhem was always front and center. And while that mayhem was still very much a fixture of Mandy 2, it wasn't a constant. 
She may have been more grounded on the surface in the approach to the character, but the character's feet didn't remain firmly planted for long. When pushed, she'd swing off the handle, becoming completely unhinged. Actually, I would argue, if provoked, this Mandy was even more ruthless than the original. When the Gallagher boys think you're going too far, you've sunk far past the depths of good taste. Acting either in revenge or selflessness, she hits Karen with her car, nearly killing her and leaving her with permanent brain damage. She threatens to bury a woman in her own front yard. I mean, granted that woman was a predator, but uh, nonetheless. Despite her vulnerability, she's not weak by any means. She stands her ground for the most part. I think at the end of the day, these are both good portrayals of the same character. They're just a different interpretation of that character. It's the same brand, but it's a different flavor. Despite having significantly less time in her role than her successor, I thought Jane felt more at home with the tone of the show. She was allowed to be a much more interesting character. It didn't matter that she struggled for screen time, because she managed to make an impression with that first season, and was kind of my favorite character throughout the first couple of episodes in spite of herself. So as far as I'm concerned, first Mandy was a lot more fun in the role. However, the second Mandy did well as well. Mandy came off as much more sympathetic. She grounded the character and humanized her. You certainly can't dismiss her contributions, not only from having played the part for so long, but for further developing that character and taking part in the character's greatest arcs. The relationship she had with Lip, the feud with Karen, all of those are products of Emma's time in the role. Ultimately, I think this is one of those occasions where the recast isn't necessarily better or worse. It pretty much breaks even. Jane made Mandy a tragic persona, but Emma's Mandy was a troubled person. Strike that. Reverse it. Jane makes more of an impression, but Emma made more of an impact. There's a definite difference in the demeanor of these two Mandys to a degree. However, there's still a fair amount of common ground between the two performances for these two people to feel like this one person. And I think canonically, the change in character could be seen as a growth in that character. From first impressions in season one, to becoming well acquainted with the Gallaghers and the audience by season two. I think it'd be more than fair to say that these friendships had an influence on her, and her time with Lip and Ian allowed her let her guard down and open up more. Despite all the differences, the character pretty much feels the same, just with some additional developments. Respectively, both these actresses were good in the part they were given, but different things were asked of them when they were in that part. So it becomes really hard to choose one over the other. What surprises me most about this character though, and this might be a little bit of an unrelated note, is just how little she factored in into the later seasons of the show. She was once an important piece of the puzzle, but somehow she faded into the background before eventually fading from existence. Meanwhile, her on-screen brother stuck around to the very end of the series playing a vital part in Ian's character development and becoming one of the main cast members. And yet, Mandy doesn't even get so much as a cameo or a name drop outside of one time after her absence. She doesn't show up for the major moments in her brother's life. He gets married to her best friend, and she's still nowhere to be seen, and nobody's asking about her. The character's final farewell is kind of unfortunate. It leaves off on such a sad note with no positive path for her. But then again, who on the show ever got a happy ending? I've actually really wanted to do a The Day It Died for Shameless, so if you'd be interested in seeing me go through that entire show and talk about the day that it all went downhill, let me know in the comment section below by leaving a comment saying, There's another one. I am vengeance. I am the knight. And that was V Infuso. Just remember, if you're not tuning in, then you're missing out. So if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole, and you too would like to become a V-generate? Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, nerds! And if you're not joining the fun, you're in for one bad day. And you know what they say about having one bad day. <laughs> Catch him next time. Same bad time. Same bad channel.